The creature, that's who you are. Humble yourself. We are not ready to lose us. And especially ladies, you have to be careful with this independent girl syndrome. Some of you drive away men of God that God sent to marry you. Drive away your independent self. Die lonely and gray and frustrated. Are you here? Oh, I'm just checking. It is the reality. We are full of ourselves. If, if a pastor comes here and, and, he, and, and the, the praise team sings and, and he forget to call one person him, it's a great possibility they're not singing next week. Because they were never acknowledged. We have allowed the praise of men to distract us from the presence of God. And God said something to me that scared me. He said, son, do not let the church hide you from me. Today, right across Jamaica, some call it, call it Pentecost Sunday. And I don't think we understand it. Because what we are trying to do is to relive something that already happened. And God said to me, the challenge with a lot of our churches, why the people don't know me, is that my people are stuck in a move that happened already. So if you want to feel God, there's that one song in Amalie Pulan. And you think it's God, but it's your emotion means story. Listen to that preacher, you'll get a word. Just say emotion means story. And so when we look at this country today, when you see the things that Christians do, you really wonder if God is first. We cuss because he's not first. We malice because he's not first. We celebrate someone's sin instead of being recon reconciling someone. Why? Because he's not first. We laugh at the young lady who got pregnant without getting married. Instead of restoring her because we didn't put God first. We disassociate ourselves from the brother who professed that he's struggling homosexuality. Why? Because we don't put God first. Because as a people, we have to maintain our image. And that's one thing I've learned that church people will not get dirty. But kingdom folks is willing to get in the mud and become dirty to deliver somebody. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are pressing our side. Attacks are everywhere. And what kills me with our church today is that we have young people in the house that's being deceptive because they cannot express to you what's really happening with them. And, and to my adults here, sometimes I wonder if we forget that we were also young people. Today they can text and delete. You used to throw stone upon the house stop and make a signal that you're here. Why didn't I agree with the pastor today? You know, see, that's true. Today they can text on their phones and make up location. Come on, all my adults in here. You pass the gate and make some noise. Hey! Say, no, say, I have time for come a pipe, come catch water. I will link up, spot that. No, we behave as if we didn't have these issues and struggles in our lives. And so we have young people who are gifted, but they are damaged, but they know church, so they give you church. And so we have young people who are singing, dancing, preaching, and on a first class ticket going to hell because they're being deceptive. They can say to the church, I am struggling with homosexuality. I can't tell us, Mr. Human, but I love our next sister in the church. They can't tell you that they're struggling with masturbation. And they're lost in porn. Because if you ever you go for the aisle and blood them up and look at them funny and then tell your children stay away from them. That's the church today. Where is the heart of God that should be in us? Put God first. That's what we are saying, right? So why it has to be about you? Put God first. That's what we're saying, right? So why do we pick and choose who we greet? You ever tried that song in church? 
uh, smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hand to the one. And if we don't talk, let me shake and make sure we pass that place. And some people will never move because they're not trust not church people. Where is the heart of God? Tell your neighbor, it's time to die. We have too much living believers in the house. We have too much adults in the house. And, and matter of fact, adults won't go to heaven. God says you've got to be like a child. You must be open to correction, to rebuke. And when I find that Christians today, we love Jesus at heals. We love Jesus at bless. We love Jesus at prophesies. But we don't love Jesus at rebuke. Look at your neighbor and say hello. Come on, neighbor and say hello. You all right? Ask them, where is God in your life? It is sad today that we evaluate people that we are somewhere with God based on their gifts. We evaluate people today that we are somewhere with God based upon the knowledge of the word they have. And you have not watched the fruit. It is a character that stands out, brothers and sisters, that makes the difference. And today what we find is that Christians, as I said, we are lost in the culture of church. We are lost in the culture of, of doing what my denomination wants. We are lost in the culture. And, 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 and matter of fact, I, I, you know, this is not on your pastor. This is Pastor Leng saying, me, me, born denomination. Lighting and fire and turned up on denomination. I'm not a raster man, but that let me say. Jesus says, Father, as you and I want, my prayer is that the people will be one. The reality is some of us never, never worship on the same day. We may never dress the same way. But the truth of the fact is all of us are saying that Jesus Christ is Lord. Read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's called a synaptic gospel. All of them tell the same story but from how they saw him. Say, neighbor, is God first in your life? So ask him, so why your blood pressure is like that? Why are you here dropping out your head? How comes they have lost so much weight or gained so much weight? Is God first in your life? If he's first, then, then why is it that you have isolated yourself? If he's first, then why you have not done what he has commanded to do? And a lot of us are frustrated that God is not speaking to us. Brothers and sisters, if God speaks again, all he's going to do is to repeat to you what he already tell you what to do. Is he first? Man of God, we are suffering as a people and we're saying Satan will fight us. It's not Satan. Check your obedience. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, and I don't know where we get from as Christians that because we are saved, because we have Jesus on our side, we must be problem free. May I remind you that Job says a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Jesus says don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow have its own trouble this life you live brothers and sisters have difficulties and you must know not because you carry God's promise that Satan will leave you the promise of God is not the absence of problems and so there is a misconception of faith that because we are serving the great God who has never been defeated because he identify himself with us then we will not be attacked may I awaken you Satan cannot touch God but he can come after those who belong to God I want you to look at someone and say to them in this life you must fight it's a part of our lives and it comes in different ways and shapes and somebody don't call you up and say, hello, I'm going to check your 12 o'clock today. It just shows up out of nowhere. Finish speaking tongues at a great time. You care after your flat. Just get all of the money and feel so good and the child gets sick immediately. 
Make your husband a nice dinner. Come on, put on something wonderful. The man come in cussing you out. Travel, brothers and sisters. You must understand it's a part of your life. And the challenge with the believer is that we're living in this fantasy world. That because we have God, we're going to be okay. And this fantasy world, that all we have to do is to plead the blood of Jesus. My question to you as a believer, what do you do when a demon says the blood is against you? What do you do? When a demon call by Jesus' name. And some say, Pastor, that can't happen. Why can't happen? And it's very sad today that as a, a Pentecostal church, what we have done is saying, if someone is going to deliverance and them say, Jesus, them delivered. Where get that from? And we are lost in tradition and things, brothers and sisters, that as a people, that Christian can't handle nothing. Our minds are not ready for nothing at all. COVID exposes us that we're not ready. We are preaching about going to heaven. We are preaching about seeing God. And as church closed down, Christian backslide. So your dependency was never on God. It was about coming here. That's where we are as a people today. We can't feel God unless the worship team sings. And if they ever sing your song, I'm catching a spirit. And them cut the chorus, your backs. That's where we are as a people today. Buying anointing. Simon the sorcerer. So when someone likes to get what they have, you are a thief if you do that. Go seek God. That's where we are as a people. So we think because, you know, we are with God and we came to church and we just come up a 40 days fasting. Oh my God, we are good. Can I, can I testify with you? I went on seven days dry fast. Well, only water I had. Only water. Seven days. And, and mark your brothers and sisters. My fat, no. My fat, right? My really fat, no, for real. I could see my bones and everything. And I felt like I, like one of those Moses experience. Coming out of the mountain with the glory on me. I heard God. I feel pop. And a young lady came and visited the house where I was staying. <laughs> you know, a little teeny skirt. So. Speak in tongues. I'm anointed. This can't trouble me. She sat across from me. And woman of God, she opened up her legs. And I'm saying the blood of Jesus. Me, I said the blood, but my body, I said something else. <laughs> when her sister left the room, she got up, walked over to me, and tell me how long she wanted me, and whisper some stuff what she going to do to me. And my body responded. I said, the blood. I said, God, will just come out for seven days. Whoa, this church, I got up and I couldn't walk straight. I had to walk like this. This time I really say, hey, that's the problem, church, who fit. Let me tell you, go. And I went on the wall outside and I sat on the wall and I said, God, me not understand, God. Why would me just come out of this fasting? How come this happened? And that's the challenge with us. We think because we're in convention today and somebody may lay hand and prophesy to you that you're no superhuman being. Listen to me, young people. Stop those private Bible studies. I am not married for 10 years. And I was going to get married to my wife. But we were having Bible study. Reading the word of God. And me no have no sexual issue. And we sat there reading the Bible. And, and everybody came out of the house leaving. And while reading this word of the Lord. One foot touch one foot. Something moving on my body, so <laughs> something moving off your body. So we looked at each other where we shouldn't look at each other. And we, I slowly closed the Bible with respect. 
And I slide the Bible aside. And a month later, she called me and said she's pregnant. The anointed men of God. The powerful man of God. The future pastor. <laughs> the deaconess son. The anointed man that is praised among the church. Oh great brother Leng is, brother Leng is, brother Leng is. And I got my girlfriend pregnant. One moment, that's all it took. And so we have this thing that all we... What's the matter? Can I hear me preach again? No, you know. Not God. Yeah, I've been married for 10 years now. Mm. 10 years. And, and just to make matters clear, I didn't marry my wife because she got pregnant for me. I was already going to marry her. And the church tell me, say, they might choose her for me. Because they had a wife for me. And they had the church I must pastor right after. What am I trying to say to you? You must be honest with yourself. Don't think when you leave from here today an anointing touch you that Satan afraid of you. If Satan could hang out with Jesus for 40 days, who are you? Who are you? If Satan could invite himself over heaven and meet him and no, no, no angel send him any text message or letter. He just walks up and who are you? Why are you thinking because they have the blood and, and speaking tongues? I, I went to a prime meeting, a young man, someone was possessed and they told him, uh, he says, me I'm going to deal with it. He came back the following week mad because pride was in him. And it is very sad today, church, that Christian believe if a prophet prophesies or lay hands on you, you are all powerful. And Jesus' disciples came back to him and talked how demons obey him. And he said to himself, don't get excited about that. But more concerned, your name is written. Pay attention to your relationship with me. And if we're not careful, we can get lost in, in the church system. And young people, we will stay in here and pretend to be all right. Uh, listen to me. If you are being deceptive, Satan already have advantage on you. 